Hello and welcome back to the Film School Chronicle. I am your host, Carmelo Keating, and joining me as always is your co my your co-host, <laughs> Bryce Quinn. Bryce, how are you today? I'm good, Melo. How are you? Very good. Kind of tired. Um, radio. Right so today we are jumping across the river to QUT. We are joined by two QUT first years. We have Kai Giovanni and Ruben Haig. How are you this morning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Tired as well. Yeah, we yeah. actually got you out of bed. I believe you were um, at a gig last yeah, night. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was my band's headliner. Um, this is like the sequel to the, like, yeah, Cole talking about our band. Yeah. A while so you be another part of the band, so a spiritual successor yeah. in this podcast today. You're <laughs> yeah. gonna see like, oh, how was? We've got a gig coming up, and now the aftermath of the yeah, gig. Exactly. Today. You get yeah. to see, hear the the aftermath of my like, you know, blood nose from headbanging and my my lost voice. Yep. So I think that's a good gig. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, very nice. Um, it's great to talk to um, fellow film students, but from a, a different course. So uh, Kai, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm Kai. And yeah, I'm a first year, uh, second semester at QT, studying uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Film, Screen and New Media. And um, yeah, and I've just been, I've been enjoying it. It's been good stuff and like I, of course I've been good and just like to do like film things on the side as well. Um, you know, just to expand the repertoire, I guess. And, um, yeah, that's me, I guess. <laughs> Very nice. And Ruben, uh, about yourself as well. Yeah, I'm doing the exact same course. I work with Cole a fair bit as well. Um, yeah, not much difference there. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay, very nice. Um, so, I think the big question that a lot of our Griffith listeners have, and the same thing that we have, is... So QUT instead of Griffith, then, you know, I suppose the same question goes for us. What was it about QUT that uh, interested you in that film course? So, like, we, um, because Ruben and I come from the same high school, and so um, we both found our passion for film kind of around the same time, and Mm -hmm. so when it came time to start picking courses and all that, we were kind of going through the same process, and so we, we looked, like, very extensively at, like, a lot of unis and, like, look through the kind of course outlines and all that because you know i like to do that um yeah and i and it, my initial plan was just to go with the griffith one right yeah because yeah. i didn't know the qt one existed at right. that point yeah. yeah sorry guys i converted him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so we and yeah it came the final two came down towards griffith and you and um qt and but yeah i guess just what appealed to me most about the qt one is um i talked a lot about the placements they had and they're kind of like very kind of practical industry related classes and like not saying that Griffith doesn't have those but yeah I guess like um QT one stood out a lot more to me because um I'm not really that type of person who's too too fussed about like oh no this doesn't have too many practical subjects or whatever like as long as I'm into the content and yeah I guess um just reading the content and also like the way more streamlined QT website um it appealed to me a lot more I can't argue with that (laughs) (laughs) yeah and I think same thing for me, but when I was reading through the course outlines, the Griffith one didn't really go into much detail about what was what. It just mm-hmm. kind of felt like same sort of thing with a bit variations yeah. from the text. I'm not saying that's what it is, but <laughs> whereas the QT list was much more specific. Right. And kind of some of the stuff really stood out to me. It's like, oh, that's exactly what I was wanting to go for. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with respect to that, I mean, it's fair. Like, the major project we do each year at Griffith in first, second, and third is, you know, a short film, just with um, varying degrees of difficulty and, and length of the project. And, like, it. access to gear as well. Yeah, pretty much. And, like, that's the major thing uh, that changes. But it's, um, yeah, no, it's interesting you guys talking about, um, you know, the, the sort of structure and stuff being a bit different, a bit better in your opinion. Going into film school, the, uh, the only person I knew in the film industry um, with some degree of success was actually um, a QUT graduate who is now VFX supervisor at Weta Workshop. So There you go. Nice. Got on. Not a bad contact, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bad, eh? So, you know, it's interesting hearing from you guys. That was like the thought process of like, oh, this is a more streamlined website that goes into more details. But I think this could be some yeah. good feedback for Griffith, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, that's the thing. I was, I was pretty like, you know, happy with my, like, we were pretty happy with our decision. Like, yeah. um, the side of you were like, yeah, this course is great. And like, you know, it still is great, but like, this was before we knew anyone um, who went to Griffith Film School, mm-hmm. and then Cole goes to Winton, and yep. then makes all his, his, his mates, yep. and then um, we hear about all these opportunities, like, because Griffith, like, they sponsor, like, everyone, and yep. that's where a lot of this opportunity comes from, 
and that's something they just don't really sell at all on the website. They, you just have no idea about it. Oh, so you don't find out until you actually get there and they're like, oh, look at all these opportunities. Yeah, exactly. But it's not something that they pitch on the yeah, website. Okay. Yeah. One so. of the other unfortunate things, I think, with the whole COVID situation is that um, Griffith actually has some of the best international relations of any of the universities in Australia and especially the film school. But that means nothing, really, at the moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's nothing we can do with it. Um, yeah. Yes. We have this um, uh, convener, her name's Anne, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to say the last name. Yeah. Uh, she's like a really respected, um, like, scholar. Like yeah, a academic, film scholar. Academic film scholar um, of, like, Asia, Asian films. And just, like, having her as, like, a resource to, like, draw on, I guess, is pretty, like, insane. It is beneficial, yeah. But, again, it's, it's tricky. I guess um, there was a film festival that we were able to attend last year online that was, like, oh, um, we've got this film that no one else has ever seen. And it's just because I'm mates with the director and I just got the film and they send it over like digitally and we just watched it um, in Australia and no one else had ever seen it before. And it was like half finished. And I was like, what are we watching right now? <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. So I don't know about Bryce, but the big choice for me with, with um, picking Griffith was actually like going to the open days and like the tertiary studies expo, getting FaceTime with some of my mm. um, would be, you know, future tutors. Did you guys do anything like that? I think, I think my mistake was in, I... I'm lazy <laughs> I um you know I'm like all right I'll go to an open day but like it was kind of after I'd already made a decision because like especially for us um because we we're like the first grade in Brisbane uh, in modern times they like go back to the um ATAR system yeah right or like you know now now Queensland's in the ATAR system mm -hmm. with, with like, high school and all that and so like once you get to like literally like the start of year 12 they're like start choosing your courses Pick, pick your pick your career plan and study plan. So it's like, I we kind of already had to make a decision. So we're like, all right, well, we'll guess we'll go to the open days for QT to kind of confirm that. But yeah, I didn't really consider going to the, um, the other ones, which we probably should have. <laughs> it's like comparing contrast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it seems yeah. to have worked out for you guys. Um, you were talking before the show about uh, some short films and stuff you've been working on at uni. Yeah. yeah did you want to go into that a bit? Well, we're both... We've just started. Kai missed the meeting for it last night because of the gig. <laughs> so he knows nothing, I don't think. But um, one of our units, we've just decided on a topic from all of us. So we all had our own short film idea for our first assessment. Mm -hmm. And then our second assessment was doing a pitch. And then the final one is get a group together and make one of those ideas right chose our idea and that's pretty much <laughs> as far as we've gotten we yeah, started absolutely. delegating roles and how big is the, the group for the short film eight, eight people, people. Eight people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah definitely um, good to delegate with eight people so yeah. you don't get like eight creative minds trying <laughs> yeah. to work together that's that's good yeah um what's the length of the project you're working with Three to five minutes. Three to five. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, that sounds very similar to the, uh, the, sh the short film project we get in first year. So mm. I feel like there's a lot mm. of comparisons. What short film project? We made a, a s animated storyboard. So uh, in our first year when we were supposed to do short film projects, we got sent home for COVID lockdown. Oh. So we didn't actually get to make a short film in first year, which is sad, but you know, what are you going to do? Oh. Um, so what are you guys interested in going to um, into filmmaking? You know, uh, Hopefully if all this all works out. I'm going to go first. <laughs> oh, all right, I'll go first. Um, yeah, well, my plan is for the proper job side of things, just finding a position as like a cameraman or sound guy, or whatever, something simple. Yeah. And then as like a side career, just make short films as often as I can. Yeah, very much. Hopefully, nice. increasing in scale. Yeah. And so, quality. Yeah, <laughs> that too. So interested in like onset roles mainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like the end goal, like under like a major studio, you reckon? No. no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Independent. Probably, probably the best choice. I I like doing my own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And what about you, Kai? Yeah. So um, when I started out this course, like I was kind of going down the same kind of career path and goal, like you know, yeah, goal was like you know work in one of those kind of. Maybe not above the line roles, but um, under under a like you know highly minor or major studio even, because um, you know it, if it's in the industry that's kind of goal achieved, right? Um, but I guess um, as as the as the course has kind of gone on, we learn more about the kind of industry stuff and the more localized kind of industry um, and the opportunities we've gotten to make stuff within the industry. It's like 
I've kind of been leaning more towards an actual kind of like local independent kind of career plan, um, which is already kind of started happening because like um, we, we get to do um, film projects every semester, so twice a year, just yeah. saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, the first one we did in the uh, first semester was a documentary, like a five minute documentary. And so, you know, spending like basically twice a week in the music scene, um, I, I just reached out to a band, I'm like, hey, you know, would you want a doc on you? And then, yeah, they did, which is great. And then what was even more great was that my team actually wanted to do it. Yeah. And so um, that kind of gave me a taste for like, because before that, I just make, did a lot of like fictional works. And so I hadn't really had much experience in making non-fiction or at least like doing it very seriously. Yeah. But um, that kind of gave me a taste for it and like kind of combining the film industry with also like the local kind of music industry. And that's something I really have been digging and like, it's led to some really cool stuff now, like getting to make stuff for people. Um, and you know, on a localized level, um, it's, it's, it's like, there's less barriers to do it aside from all the like barriers that like independent amateur filmmakers come into in Brisbane, but should be right. <laughs> yeah, not very nice. And were you on that documentary as well, Ruben? No, no, unfortunately. Okay. So what was no? What was the one that you did? Um, what did we do? It was the uh, fashion one. Oh cool yeah. One. So one of the people in my group knows a guy who's has his own fashion brand mm -hmm. and uses it to um, recycle funds back into his hometown in Africa to try and balance out the poverty there. Right. Fantastic. Oh. So yeah, it was really cool documentary itself was a bit <laughs> yeah oh, i liked it, it it was yeah i mean if i had more control it would be very different <laughs> yeah yeah really but different. lots of shortcuts taken by that well i don't know um if you had a next question mellow but i was going to ask about like what you're looking forward to over the next two years because you said you had a look at the the course profiles and everything yeah and what those courses look like um i guess like because as our course goes on you know it's like um the the amount of units or subjects kind of like decreases by one mm -hmm. um for the three year kind of course and so this year which is a full time like four units and then next year three units plus like one kind of minor and then um year three it's cool because um you know you get you get to um just two units and then start doing placements of like industry partners and all that right. and like they haven't really told us who the industry industry partners are but like Industry partners are industry partners, so good enough. Yeah. I yeah, and that's because that's what really stood out to the like to me about the course mm. in the first place. So yeah, you know, that can, was the selling point. I yeah, think. doing the networking, doing the experience, and you're doing that in first year as well. Um, no, unfortunately not. Also, oh, the industry so, placement is not. Yeah, that's that's not till third year or okay. like end of second year. Well, this is interesting it's because we're year. about to go into our industry engagement course, which is like a placement kind of course. Yeah. This... Checkmate. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the one this semester, which is like, is that working with clients? Yes. To so you got to yeah. work with the client, um, create a project and then deliver it um, to, to the client. Um, and that's sourced through uni. So like the, the oh, uni wow. like gets the client to you and then and works that all out. I'm not sure about the specifics. Same page as you. I don't know who the clients are. <laughs> I'm not, no, I don't know what I'm going to be making. I imagine some kind of like TBC, like a, like a commercial kind of thing, but yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, we were talking a little bit before the show about the fact that, um, you know, Griffith encourages us in our first year and second year to try and work with the cohort above on their projects as much as possible, just to get some more experience. Do you have that option available to you? They haven't really brought it up. Right now, in all honesty, because I guess, um, oh sorry, I yeah, guess. they like keep talking about what we will be doing as we get to those stages, but they haven't really talked about working with higher level people, right? Yeah. So it's more like self contained in the cohorts, like third years, work with third years, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Because, yeah, when, when our yeah. cohort came in for like every like part of the arts or just every every kind of facet of QT it was like their big cohorts yeah. so um, oh, and yeah, then also like the huge. one before us they're probably like you know they're all like oh cool these guys get to make all their films and stuff that's great you know all these guys free from covid you know it's fine <laughs> yeah like, yeah sorry guys <laughs> um i think an interesting question would be like the crew sizes for those because i know in second year we had you know a crew of 20, 20. to 30 yeah um that we were like managing i was the producer so i was like oh I've got to manage all these people. Um, so, and the, the idea is you bring in the first years to fill in the extra roles like production runner and like lighting assistant and the, those small roles because then they're on set and they're getting experience like on an actual mm -hmm. set where it's like over the course of two days. 
Same thing for Grand Slate, but even bigger, where it's like a 30 to 40 person crew, um, like all totaled up. And you record over the course of like seven days to get the Grand Slate made, um, which is the, the final 30 year project. Yeah. So I don't know if there's anything similar like that, because it, I think it's a big thing with the crew sizes, because you just don't have enough 30 years to fill up um, those mm. tiny, those tiny like runner rolls and the lighting system rolls. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. I honestly have no clue. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Yeah, yeah I guess. From what I've noticed, that kind of stuff, like, um, it happens, like, pretty often, like, um, kind of extra extracurricularly, because, like, um, QT is very big about it's like clubs or like guilds, mm-hmm. and so like they've got the QT Film Club, which is like um, the the kind of like executive team for all the clubs are always like you know third years or even like um, first year out graduates, and and so they kind of provide a lot of opportunity. Um, like I'm mm-hmm. I myself in a first year ambassador on the QT Film Club at the moment. Right. Cool. And um, and it's been it's been it's been cool. Like it's been hard to find stuff because like. All these COVID going on and all that, but um, it's still been, it's still been cool and like yeah, show me it's some collaboration is still possible. It just kind of has to happen on your own kind of um, right, yeah. accord. So what kind of um like activities and everything are planned through the film club? Um, because it's like like um, I guess it's more of like a film appreciation club than a filmmaking club, but yeah. we still like yeah. give filmmaking opportunities. So like yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of trivia nights mm-hmm. and um. Yeah. yeah. Well, sounds familiar to something. We've got like. an equivalent, and I think yeah. there was actually an attempt to try and bridge the gap. We've got uh, sort of this, our club is called the Griffith Screen Society. Mm. Um, and I think there was an attempt to make a networking event a while ago. So, back. Julian, um, the president, mentioned something along that a yeah, long yes. time ago in one of the early episodes that. of this podcast. Yeah. He was like, Yeah, we want to like um, reach out to like different unions and stuff. And I don't know how that's going because they, like the, the Griffith Screen Society team, were all like key creatives on this huge, yeah. pro- huge project in second year and they've gotten swamped with that. I think it's just been too busy for they've them. They've been very busy. That's what we heard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, there's still, there's next year for us, there's two years for you guys. So, it yeah. could still happen. Who knows? Yeah. We almost um, showed up at your guys' um, latest trivia, the, um, the QUT team, but um, oh, unfortunately, that, like, that would have been brilliant. The yeah. Yeah. I was like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Next time. We're Next time, like, sure. Yeah. But yeah, definitely show up. Maybe prove ourselves. I can't <laughs> yeah. <get around>. <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> prove ourselves. I don't know. We're, we're mates with the most recent winning team, so like. Yeah, I don't know how they won. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> They're very good friends Honestly, of ours. It's all calm. It's all calm, man. Yeah, <laughs> right. I wanted to take a step back just before we um, sort of come more towards the end of the show, um, and and talk about films it, themselves because you know I can't believe we've actually gone this whole time without talking about you know what sort of films you guys are interested in, maybe some films that uh, inspired you to get into filmmaking. So I might blow my nose for a second. That's okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. It's fine. Uh, um, I'm so recording. Yeah. yeah, for me, big one was definitely Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, yeah, nice. A massive. Tolkien fan in general but those films and what Peter Jackson did like the fact all, nearly all of the sound recordings for armies marching particularly orcs was getting a bunch of people in a sports stadium to stomp on the ground yeah. and just recording 10 seconds of that and yeah. just wow. using that throughout the whole trilogy. Yeah, no, that was, and just, that was very cool. Yeah. His, <laughs> his, all his little tricks and stuff I loved yeah. and, you know, the rise of Weta Workshop and mm. all that stuff. So that was pretty huge. Right. Nolan is a big influence too, I reckon. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. We're, we're we definitely talk, Nolan fans. We talk about Nolan something. too much on the show. Just, just <laughs> <all the things. laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, what about you, Kai? Um, yeah, I guess... Um, because I started like kind of just like you know going out like once a month before COVID to be like yeah you know I'll just watch a film just you know just to see what's out there and then so I picked this film um called Hunt for the World of People because um mm-hmm. I'm a Kiwi so I gotta support Kiwi films right and um it just it, it blew me away honestly and then like and then I was like oh my gosh this was the same like director as Boy and like Boy is just like incredible and I guess like Taika Waititi's um, the director's whole like kind of career kind of path has been kind of inspiring to be like you know he's kind of like I mean like a lot of um, very motivated filmmakers started out just making their own kind of things with their own kind of resources and budgets in their own local places and then that just kind of like got them to where they are now 
and um, it's quite inspiring. Yeah. So mm-hmm. taking a lot of inspiration from, I guess, New Zealand's two greatest yeah. filmmaking experts. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's very cool. That's good. Nice yeah. and close to home, I guess. Better yeah. than like uh, usually like people's like American go tos. You know, it's good to support the Kiwis. Yeah. yeah our yeah. neighbors. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The Kiwis got some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Um, so I think we might just close with our final segment, an exciting one uh, that I call "The Future Is Looming." It's back. Oh. Um, <laughs> because, let's be honest, the future is always looming. Filmmaking at uni is not going to go for too long before we know it will be out there. So what does the future hold for, for you, Ruben? Got any projects or anything coming up? Um, well, I mean, I'm working on a short film at the moment. Um, I don't know if you guys know the YouTube channel Cinematic Captures. No, He's, actually. He does a lot of virtual production stuff and is very Star Wars focused. Right. Right. He's holding a Star Wars short film competition, so we are shooting that on Wednesday, aren't yeah. we? Looking very the Jedi. <laughs> very nice. Excellent. <laughs> Best of luck with the shoot. And so that's coming up for you. Uh, anything yeah. apart from that project as well for yourself, Kai? Um, yeah, I've, um, with, with that, um, well, the the duck area that I told you guys about, we ended up um, making a di- different edit of that that's not related to the uni. Yep. Um, for basically for oh. the band, and so we've um, entered that in a festival, and so that, so that'll roll out. Um, in a little bit and we'll see how that goes and then it'll be public like around October I think mm. and then um, yeah thanks to that like during the time we were in contact with the band they actually got signed to a upcoming kind of booking label called Interstellar Music um, Calvin's a great guy and um, yeah he's just been kind of like hooking me up with like hey man you know you're a, you're a, you're a young filmmaker you, would you want to like help me do some projects I'm like I guess yeah okay yes <laughs> So yeah, working on some music videos and videography things at the moment, um, which like we'll see how I balance it with uni, but yeah. you know, that's what the future holds. Yeah, really best, nice. best of luck with all of that stuff. And where can we find any of the projects that you're gonna be making? Is uh, do you guys run on Instagram at all or any social media stuff? Yeah, I um, yeah, I I, most, I put I put a lot of my stuff on my Instagram, which is kaijuvani fm right. film music. And, yeah, we'll, um, we'll tag that in the Instagram. Yeah, post. and my um, pro- probably a bit of my YouTube, which is just it's called the Kai Giovanni Experience. <laughs> oh, very <laughs> nice. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> uh, and Ruben, any social medias? Yeah, uh, I got the film Ruben, which I only set up like four days ago, so it's got nothing on it yet. But um, yeah, the, that it will have stuff soon. Very nice. Stay tuned yeah. for that one audience okay so that brings us to the end of the show uh thank you both so much for coming on today it's been great having you and been great sort of you know starting to to bridge the gap between find out a bit more QT. 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 Yeah. Yeah. um oh, yes pleasure. if you have enjoyed this episode audience look forward to um these same sort of things in the future um and if by any chance we've got some qt listeners go back check out some of our other stuff and and stay tuned for some more qt um content in future bryce thank you so much for coming on the show and hosting it as always anytime Mel. What weird phrasing <laughs> thank you for listening or watching however you've been consuming this content this has been the Film School Chronicle